When was the last time you caught up on your U.S. history? Being aware of current fair housing laws is super important, but it's as equally important to understand where these laws came from. For example, the fight for fair housing could not have been possible without the enactment of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Many argue that this act was the first step in combating housing discrimination and ensuring equal opportunities for all. Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com. Today we're talking about the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Let's get started. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 declared that all persons born in the United States are created equal by the law. The Civil Rights Bill protected the rights of freed slaves, ensuring they had full and equal benefits at the same laws as white people. African Americans could no longer face discrimination because of their race, color, or previous slavery or involuntary servitude. But to which personal freedoms did black citizens finally have access to? Well, most notably, the Civil Rights Act of 1866 said that recently enslaved people had the right to, one, make and enforce contracts, two, sue and be sued, three, give evidence in court, and then four, what we're gonna be talking about primarily is purchase, lease, sell, hold, and convey real and personal property. So how did this come to be? What's the history behind this? Well, from 1776 until 1865, the enslavement of Africans and African Americans was legal in the United States. While the 13th Amendment eventually abolished slavery, this dark period caused irreparable damage. We can still see its effects in the housing industry today. When the 13th Amendment was finally passed in 1865, race issues were not immediately fine and dandy. Black citizens were still not considered equal under federal law and could not even own property. It wasn't until Senator Limwell Trumbull introduced the Civil Rights Bill in 1866 and the conversation started to shift meaningfully. Although President Andrew Johnson vetoed the bill, Senate and the House voted to override him. Thus, the Civil Rights Act of 1866 became law. So how does this play into real estate? Well, among the many benefits of the 1866 Civil Rights Act, one of the most important was that any person born in the U.S. could own property regardless of their color or race. This new law greatly impacted the real estate world, opening the door for conversations about fair housing and housing discrimination. As a result, more types of people are now able to access fair housing opportunities. While housing discrimination is still not entirely eradicated in the U.S., the issue is statistically much lower than in 1866. So where does this act succeed? Well, in many ways, Civil Rights Act of 1866 was revolutionary. The national government finally recognized African Americans as citizens who deserved equal rights. No longer could African Americans be forced into slavery or involuntary servitude. Instead, they could create or enter into lawful employment contracts. If an injustice were to occur against a person of color, they could sue the offender in court and provide their own evidence. But in terms of real estate specifically, the ramifications of such an act were enormous. The decision that former slaves could own property was not only a step in racial equality, but equality for all types of minorities who fair housing laws would later protect. So where did it fall short? Well, unfortunately, the passage of the Civil Rights Bill did not immediately ensure peace and equality for all. Sure, black citizens could finally own property in the United States, but racial discrimination and segregation were still rampant. The laws created in the Civil Rights Act of 1866 were also not always adequately enforced, so housing discrimination was still an issue. Even when black citizens could access housing opportunities, many white citizens were less than welcoming to their new neighbors. To make matters worse, black citizens were also fighting against voter suppression. Their ability to vote for more stringent fair housing laws was compromised as they were intimidated at polling places and often turned away. Considering all of this, it's safe to say that African Americans received only nominal freedom due to the 1886 Act. It's also important to note that this act was primarily focused on ending discrimination against formerly enslaved people. In terms of housing, there were still other groups being discriminated against, including women and other minorities and religions. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 was groundbreaking for its time, but it was clear that there was still a long way to go. The good news is that fair housing laws have improved dramatically since 1866 as new regulations have come into play. And don't worry, we'll talk about those soon. So what do you need to know for the real estate exam? Well, for the real estate exam, it's essential you're aware of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Remember, these laws are what protect consumers and create a healthy 
real estate economy. And as a real estate professional, you must follow them. You may feel like an expert on the subject now, but there's always more to learn in real estate, especially fair housing. We're going to be talking about the other fair housing laws on this channel very soon. So for that, click the video here and subscribe here, or it's flip-flopped. I always mess it up and I apologize. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Till next time, see you guys later. Bye-bye.